Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be looking at the locus. Okay, so the locus is described as the term or is the term used to describe the path of a single moving point that obeys certain conditions. Okay, often when I look at the locus, I like looking at a x and y axis, kind of off skewed there. Um, okay, so basically it's, yeah, it, it's a point that basically moves in a particular path. For example, let's look at a, a situation where, you know, we might have a point um, that might be always three units away from the origin. So you can see that the path that this point is traveling in, where it's actually going to be, end up making a circle. So again, the locus is that path that moves, or the point that moves in that direction all the way around so that that path is always three units from zero. So it's three there, three there, three there, three there, etc. It might be two points. Um, it, it doesn't have to be a circle though, you know, you can have a point, another question that I'd like to see. So they might give you a point A and a point B, and they ask you for the equation of the locus that moves so that it's always the same distance from A and B, which basically means that it's probably going to be a straight line so that when I measure the distance from any point, let's say this point here, to B and A, they're going to be the same value there. I might look at the point, you know, it might be all the way down here. Again, if I measure the distance from the point PA to the point PB, then that's going to be the same distance as well. So the locus is that actual line, I might do that in an aqua color, that line there, it's going in that direction which is basically a straight line, but you can have lots of different locuses. Uh, a parabola is a very good example of a locus as well, um, but it has um, a certain condition to meet. So what do we need to know, or, or what sort of questions will we come across? Okay, so look at a question here, which is actually similar to the first one I showed you there. Um, in fact, it's identical. It says, find the equation of the locus of a point, PXY, that moves so that it is always three units from the origin. So I'm going to redraw that axis of symmetry there, axis of symmetry, the x and y axis, sorry. And let's draw a at the origin in there, so the middle there. And we're going to look at that point again, x, y, so it's going to be three units away. So it could be three there, could be three here, three there, three here, and three here. It can be three anywhere, but it's going to move, so it's going to always be three units from the origin. And as seen for that last example, that's going to end up being the equation of a circle. So the locus is that circle, okay? The equation of that circle, that line, that path that moves all the way around the origin from three units. So what is the equation of a circle? Where we've got two equations. We've got x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's when we have the center of zero, zero. Um, and we also have x minus h all squared plus y minus k all squared equals r squared when the center is hk. Now we're lucky here because the center is 0, 0 because it's the origin, so it's simply just the top one, x squared plus y squared equals 3 squared. So x squared plus y squared equals, equals 9, but what they like you to do is actually write it so it's going to equal 0. So minus 9 equals 0, and that would be the equation of that locus. Kind of like in general form, I guess. All right, it's pretty much as basic as that. That's when it's a circle. If the center is different, then obviously we use that second formula. Okay, question three. Find the equation of the locus of the point x, y that moves so that it is equidistant or equal distance from the two points 3, 2 and negative 1, 5. So let's have a look just what this might look like. So the point 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, could be up here. Let's call that point A which is the point 3, 2. We'll call the point B negative 1, 5. So negative 1 up here, 5. We'll call that point B negative 1, 5. Okay, so we're looking for the equation of the locus so that it is always the same distance from A to B, which basically means it's going to be that straight line. It's kind of going in that motion, I guess. That being looks like a negative straight line by the looks of things. So that when I measure the distance from there, to there, that distance will be the same. Or if I measure it from down here to down here, those distances will be the same. So basically I'm looking for the equation of this line here. Now the biggest mistake, people love seeing 
two coordinates and they see the word equation and they like just to find the equation of that line so they find the, the gradient in the y-intercept that's not the case because that would find you the gradient or the equation of that line ba we're looking for that green line that i drew the first of all okay which goes through b and a or through the middle of b and a and keeps on going down a little bit confusing i know but what we're looking at is basically it has equal distance from those two points so what we're actually trying to show is that pa is equal to pb or the distance of pa is always going to be the same distance as, as pb no matter where i put the point on that line so distance formula let's have a quick look at distance formula the square root if i'm looking for pa it's x2 minus x1 well let's call this the point xy so i'm going to have for PA, it's going to be x minus 3 all squared plus y minus 2 all squared. That's just using my distance formula. It's equal to the distance of PB. So again, P is x and B is negative 1. So x minus minus 1 all squared plus y minus 5 all squared. Okay, quickest way to do this is to get rid of the square root signs is to square both of them. So I'm actually going to square both of these two things here. Because if I do that, what's going to happen, the square and the square root will cancel out. And I'm just left with x minus 3 all squared plus y minus 2 all squared equals x plus 1 all squared plus y minus 5 all squared. Now what I need to do is expand the brackets and then try to make it into a general form. So if I expand the brackets, I'll get x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus y squared minus 4y plus 4 equals x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus y squared minus 10y, oh, 10, 5, 10y and then plus 25. Let me just clean that y up. So it actually looks like a y. Okay, so that's my next step is I'm expanding those brackets. I now need to get everything onto the one side. I'm probably going to go to the right hand side because that's got a positive 2x. Remember we want general form, so we want a positive 2x. And that's a minus 6x, so when I take it over it's going to be a plus 6x and it'll be positive. It doesn't really matter which side you go to, just when you, at the end of it make sure you have a positive x squared or positive x. Okay, so let's get rid of things. So I'm going to take the x squared across and I'm going to put it over here, it becomes a minus x squared. Take the plus 6, so the minus 6x becomes a plus 6x. I've got 9 plus 4, that's 13, so I'm going to take 13 away. Minus the y squared plus the 4y, and I've already dealt with the 4, so that's done. So we've got x squared minus x squared is 0, they cancel out. 2x plus 6x is 8x. 1 plus 25 is 26. 26 minus 13 is positive 13. I'm going to put that at the end. And then I've got um, y squared minus y squared is 0. Minus 10y plus 4y is minus 6y equals 0. And that is the equation of my straight line, or the equation of the locus. Okay, pretty confusing most likely, but have a go at some of those questions. They're pretty similar. The next one is a bit more challenging. This time it says find the equation of the locus of a point PXY that moves so that PA is twice the distance of PB. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look at just put some points here to see what we can come up with. So 0, 3 might be like here, for example. That might be A. And then 4, 7 might be over here somewhere. That might be B. Okay, so we're looking for the equation of the locus so that, now if I look at the distance from AB, we basically want PA to be twice the distance of PB. So let's put a point maybe here, for example. So the locus is going to be sort of going, it probably won't be a straight line by the way, but you know, it's going to do that there. So the distance from P to A is twice the distance from P to B. So for example, if P to B was 5, the distance from P to A would be 10. So how do I write that as a distance? We know that you know, the last time we wanted to come up with something something like you know, PA equals PB. Okay, so let's write that down. 
PA equals PB. But the problem is, that's if they were equidistant. We know that not to be the case. So how can I write some sort of statement to show that one thing equals the other? Well, if PB equals 5, then we know that PA is 2 lots of that is 10. So that means if PA is 10, then PB is actually 2 times that amount. Because if example of that was 10, then that would be 2 times 5 is 10, if you get what I mean. So this now shows that PA is twice PB. Because let's say if PB was 3, then PA is 2 lots of 3, which is 6. That part of it can get a little bit confusing, I know. But anyway, we've got PA equals 2 PB. If you get that statement, guys, the rest of it's pretty straightforward, pretty much so. So the distance of PA is going to be x minus 0 all squared plus y minus 3 all squared equals 2 times the distance of PB. So x minus 4 all squared plus y minus 7 all squared. Like we did last time, I'm going to square both of these so that I get rid of the square root sign. This is the only other part where it can get a bit confusing. So if I expand this, I'm just going to put x squared there because x minus 0 is x plus y minus 3 all squared is equal to, now if I've got to square the 2 as well, don't forget about the 2. So I square 2, I make 4. I square this, I miss the square root sign. So x minus 4 squared plus y minus 7 squared. Now just be careful, it can be a little bit of a mistake here. Make sure that when you are doing this, the 4 is out front of the entire thing. So you can see the 2 is out front of the whole square root sign, so I've got to be careful of that. Okay, now let's start working through expanding this x squared, uh, we've got plus y squared minus 6y plus 9 is equal to 4 lots of, then I've got x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus y squared minus 14y plus 49. And then what I need to do is start going through and um, I guess expand the brackets there, so x squared plus y squared minus 6y plus 9 is equal to 4x squared minus 32x plus, that's going to be 40, 50, uh, 64, plus y squared minus 14y, um, that's going to be well, 4 lots of 50 is 200, take away 4, 196. Hopefully that's right. <laughs> and then what we then need to do is take everything to the other side. So I'm going to do it in one hit now. So I'm going to take x squared off both sides. So I'm going to get 3x squared. Um, I'm going to do the x's next. I've got minus 32x. There's nothing x coming over, so minus 32x. Then I've got y squared. Ooh, ooh that should be 4y squared. Ooh, nearly made a mistake there. Sorry, guys. Be careful. I nearly made another mistake. So you've got to be careful and expand these brackets, guys, because you can make mistakes like I just nearly did. I don't know why I made that mistake, so my apologies. 4 times 4y squared is 4y squared, and that was a minus, wasn't it? 14 times 4, so that's 40, uh, 56y plus 196. I'm not sure I made that mistake, so my apologies. Okay, so 4x squared minus x squared is 3x squared. Got the minus, minus 32x. Now 4y squared minus y squared is plus 3y squared. Minus 56y plus 6y is plus 50y. And then I've got 196 plus 64. Okay, that's going to be, what, uh, 260. And then I'm taking 9 away, so 260, 251. I hope that's right. You get the gist if it's not, but it should be okay. Equals 0. All right, so that's one of the most challenging ones. The next one, which is going to be the last one, guys, this is your tough one. Look, they do get tougher, I must admit. Just look through your book, but these are generally the, the main tops they'll sort of show you in the exams. Um, find the equation of the locus of a point x, y, it moves so that's in the ratio. So that PA to PB, I'm just going to write this as a ratio. So the distance of PA to PB is equal to 3 to 2. Now, I'm going to liken this to the last question um, where, you know, the last question, if I just go back to the last question, 
where the last question says that pair to PB, um, pair was twice PB, okay, twice, which means it's two lots of. Um, often it means, if you think about it like that, for those ratio, it's two to one. But see how when you expanded it, we write that PA is equal to um, two PB. A lot of people get confused, so I'm going to show you how to do this in a different way. Um, I'm going to write a fraction here. So PA over PB is equal to three over two. Then by cross multiplying, PB over here, two over here, we're going to rewrite that as two PA is equal to three lots of PB. By doing those little fraction wise, it's a little easy to come up with your thing. And once you've done that, actually, it's just as easy as what we did before, except I'm going to have a two at the front of the first one, three at the front of the second one. So two lots of the square root of x minus minus six all squared plus y minus five all squared is equal to three lots of square root um, x minus three all squared plus y minus minus one all squared. Okay, I'm just going to move this up a bit. Hopefully that moves up. Okay, a bit more room there. Okay, so let's start working through this now. I'm going to square both of them. So I square the two, we get four. And I square all the stuff there. And I might actually just do it in one hit. So I've squared that and the square root's now gone. So I get x squared plus 12x plus 36 plus y squared minus 10y plus 25 is equal to square the three makes it nine. Expand the brackets. x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus y squared plus 2y plus 1. Okay, now I need to take the 4 and expand everything through. Um, you might want to like simplify things in the middle, like maybe do 36 plus 25, it's up to you. 4x squared plus 4 twelves, uh, so it's going to be 48 x um, plus y squared. Oh, I nearly did it again, didn't I, guys? Sorry. Be careful. Don't make mistakes like I just nearly did. Plus 4y squared minus 40y. Now, 36 plus 25 is going to be um, 50, 61. So you're going to times that by 4. So plus, now it makes uh, 4, 6 is 244. Equals, now do the same thing on the right-hand side. 9x squared minus uh, 9, 6 is a 54x plus 9y squared plus 18y. Um, 9 plus 1 is 10, so 9 times 10 is 90. All right, now let's move into the right-hand side. So we have a bigger x's over there. So we do 9x squared minus 4x squared is 5x squared. Then we've got minus 54x minus 48x. Now it's going to be about 102, I think. So minus 102x. These are getting too big for my mind. Um, okay, then we've got 9y squared minus 4y squared is plus 5y squared. Then I'm going to do 18y plus 40y. So it's going to be plus 58y. And then we've got 90 minus 244. So 90 take away 244. It's going to be 154, I think. Negative 154 equals 0. Okay, and that ends up coming to be your answer. So hopefully my uh, addition is correct. I'm sure you'll let me know if it's not. Um, you can see that each time I'm writing the x squared and the x, and the y squared and the y, and then my number at the end of it. Okay? Look, guys, that's pretty complicated stuff. I hope that sort of made at least a little bit of sense. Um, play around with this. I think it's, uh, most of those questions are from exercise, um, I think it's 10.2 from the blue two-unit book or exercise 11.2 from the um, three-unit book, which is the green book. Um, have a crack at some of those questions, have a play around and see if you can come up with the answers. As I said, 
focus on those three style of questions, they do get more challenging, like saying things like a, a perpendicular gradients and a few things like that. But that's generally the ones that you see in the preliminary paper. Have a great day, guys. Uh, let me know if you need any assistance.